Okay, here's the problem. I have a disc and it's spinning and then I drop an identical disc on top of it and this disc was not spinning and then they they rub together and they reach some constant speed and so we want to find out a final angular velocity so we'll call it omega 2 we'll call that omega 1 2 change in kinetic energy change in uh, Let's call it kinetic, change in rotational kinetic energy. So at the, at the beginning, this is a conservation of angular momentum problem. So you remember that angular momentum for a rigid object is defined as I omega, where I is the moment of inertia and omega is the angular velocity. So this is the scalar version of the moment of inertia. Just so you know, there is a more complicated version and the L is the angular momentum. So if I choose my system, as the two disks, then the angular momentum before they hit is equal to the angular momentum after they collide. And this is true because net torque is zero. And that is, there is, a, it is a zero vector. Okay, so if there's no torque on my system, then the angular momentum should be conserved. So that means the angular momentum before is equal to the angular momentum afterwards. So let's write this down as an equation. The angular momentum before the collision is going to be equal to uh, I, which I know the angular the moment of inertia for a disk is one half m r squared. Uh, so you could you could derive this with calculus. Usually you would just look this up. It's not something that you'd have to derive. I hope you don't have to memorize it, uh, but if you do, that's fine. So the moment the angular momentum of this disk is going to be one half. It's going to be I omega 1, and this is all in the z direction, so I'm just writing these as positive scalars, plus i times 0, because this disk isn't moving, so it has no angular momentum. And that's going to be equal to the final angular momentum, which is going to be 2i omega 2. So you see here that they both have the same angular velocity at the end, so they're going to have the, uh, their angular momentums will add together but they'll have a new velocity, angular velocity. So right now, we, you can already see this is an easy problem, because if, but we're gonna make it all the way. So if I want to solve for omega two, I get omega two equals I omega one over two I, because I divide that by two, and that just is one half omega one. So in this case, if I take these two disks of the same, they're identical disks, and I drop them together, their final angular, velocity will be half of the initial. This is just like taking two train cars and hitting a train car into a stationary car and they, they're the same mass, momentum's conserved, they have half the initial velocity. Okay, but if these were different disks, that would not be true. You could get a ratio of, of angular momentums. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in here. Uh, if I said the initial angular velocity is 120 RPM, uh, then this would be, omega two would be half that, so 60 RPM and that's radians per minute. And I'm gonna convert that into radians per second. Because now we wanna look at the change in kinetic energy. This is a little bit more important. So if I have a rotating object, in this case it's a disc, then the rotational kinetic energy is one half I omega squared can't see that. Okay. So you can think of this as um, a whole bunch of masses in here and they all have in they all have just normal translational kinetic energy and you can get this equation out of it. Uh, I'll have to maybe do that derivation sometime or at least show you um, with a few masses to show you they get the same thing. Actually that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, but, but for now, we'll just say that's true. So the change in kin rotational kinetic energy is going to be 1 half i omega 2 squared minus 1 half i omega 1 squared. Now, in order to get this in joules, then omega has to be in radians per second. So let's, let's go ahead and convert because why not? So omega 1 is 120 revolutions per minute. 
Now the key to unit conversion is to multiply by the factor one. So if I multiply this by, if I want to get rid of revolutions, I can say two pi radians is one revolution. If I go around a circle one time, that's two pi radians. It's also one revolution. So this is the unit, the quantity one. So I can multiply it by this and it doesn't really do anything. And that's, that's fine. Um, so now the revolutions cancel and I get two pi radians per minute. I can do the same thing with seconds. So I can say one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And then the minutes cancel. So I get two pi times 120 over 60. And it just so happens 120 over 60 is two. So it's gonna be four pi radians per second. And then I could do the same thing for omega two as 60 revolutions per minute multiply by two pi radians over one revolution and one minute over 60 seconds. In this case, I get two pi radians per second. Uh, so now I need to calculate the, uh, I can go ahead and calculate the change in kinetic energy. It's just gonna be one half times I, I guess I should calculate I. I is one half m r squared and the mass was uh, 0.5 kilograms and the radius was 0.1 that's a kilogram so that's that so I get one half and then I get one half 0.5 times 1.1 squared and then I have to do the change in the ang the rotational velocity of four no, the final the final is going to be 2 pi radians per second minus 4 pi radians per second. And so the change in kinetic energy is going to be negative because it's going to decrease in kinetic energy, which means it's going to increase in thermal energy. So delta K is going to be, let's just put this all together. I get 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. So it's 1 eighth. So 1 eighth point times 0 0.01, that's that, times negative two pi, and that's gonna be in joules. And I'm gonna leave it like that. So there you go.